hi in this css episode we're going to learn about the css display property display property come in two main forms okay we have the block display so we have block display and then we have inline display right so with the first type of display it takes the full width of the screen no matter how you increase or decrease the screen size that's the block display and with the inline display it only takes the space it needs okay so this may not make sense let me display or demonstrate this further with the help of my browser and my code editor okay so let's go ahead and look at some of the block display type in css okay so the first display type i'm going to be talking about is h1 okay h1 so h1 is a you put h1 then you put this is like this come down and I will put e tag which is paragraph we'll put like this is okay so this is a paragraph paragraph okay we can have h2 h3 all the way to h6 okay so now let's save the changes okay so let me take you to our web browser this is my web browser and this is our h1 and this is our paragraph okay so to demonstrate that this is a block display type let's go back to our code editor and then i want to write some css and target h1 and p okay so we'll go to style.css and then inside here we're going to target h1 so i put h1 like this and then i'm going to give it a border okay so let's give it a border of let's say five pixel solid like this red this way okay now let's also target our tag which is paragraph and then we're also going to give that one to a border like this and then we're going to give it the same five pixel solid green this way perfect now let's go to our web browser reload this page and as you can see from here to here is the main content but because it's a block display type it's taking the full width of our browser and that's why it is qualified to be called a block display type so h1 h2 all the way to h6 are all under what we call the block display type paragraph is also under the block display type diffs are all under the block display type okay let me go ahead and prove that okay so i'll go to index.html and then come down and write a diff tag okay so diff way and then inside this diff you can put some content there okay so let's open it up this way and then you can put content around it okay so maybe text so put something like maybe paragraph there put tag inside but we're going to be targeting the, the diff itself okay as a container so this is this is a paragraph in a like this so we're going to take this div so i'll take you to our css and then 
we're going to target div and then we're going to also give that one a border okay. so border and then we're going to give it the same five pixel so five pixel and then let, this time let's give it okay so we dotted all the same solid so solid and then yellow yellow right yellow like this and then our semicolon all right so what else can we do we can give it a height okay for now let's go to our browser and see what will happen all right so you can see because we have p inside it p tag is also you can see we have first paragraph and second paragraph so we can actually go ahead and then move that paragraph so this is not needed okay i only needed something that will contain our text okay so let me remove it and we're able to render our leaf let's see but you see that because there's no content inside see how it looks that's why i kept that content inside it okay so that's the first display type in css let's look at the other display type which is inline display property or display type All right so let's go ahead and look at inline display type so the second display type in css is inline display type and with inline display type it only takes the space it needs okay to contain right the space it requires to take okay unlike block display which takes full width of a web browser with inline it only takes a small space the small the space it needs right so let's go to our code editor and then explain this further so i'll come down and then we are going to talk about our inline display type so one common example is span span okay span and another example is a link tag so i'll put a and then href and after this href we're going to give it a link like this this way and then we can close it like this and then we'll put our link text here so maybe we'll put something like this is a, a link this is a link good so let's go to our web browser reload this page you can see from here to here with inline display type it takes this portion okay the only the space it needs you can see that and we can stack them together and to do so we can put another inline element which is an image so image also supports the inline display so src a source and then we're going to put our image here okay so i have my image inside a folder called img forward slash and then i'll pick one of my images like this and we'll put our old tag there this way and then we we'll simply close it this way good so we'll go ahead and then view this particular thing here so reload this page and because it's big and we have to actually reduce the size of this image to make it look smaller okay but when you look beneath you can see okay it's not visible let me help you see that so you can simply reduce the size of this image by putting something like height okay so we're going to adjust the height of this image so i'll give it height like uh, let's say 100 100 is too much i want it to be tiny okay so let's put 50 pixels so 50 pixel it's okay so let's go back there reload this page and now you can see they are next to each other okay this that okay all right the next in line 
display type element in CSS is the spam. So we can use spam, right? So with the spam, what you need to do is to put spam and then you close it. And inside here, you can put text there. Okay. So this is a what? Spam. Spam. Like this. And then you can target this spam and give it some design. Okay. So let's go to our CSS part and then we target spam. So we can target spam. Good. This way. Then spam here. And we're going to give it our text color or let's give it a background color. Okay. So let's give a background color. Background color of something like maybe yellow. This way. Background color of yellow. So our text is going to have yellow background color. All right. But it's not going to stretch from here all the way to the end. Okay. It's going to take the space it needs okay so reload this page you can see this way it ends so that's the inline css type okay it's very very simple so what if you want to give inline level elements width or height by default inline elements has a display type of inline let me explain that further okay so i'll take it to the code edit i can see here we didn't specify any display type but automatically because it knows that span is falls under inline display level elements is giving it an inline property so you can put and here you put a line okay All right by default this is how it should look like and when we go there nothing should change with our p tag or h1 those that are also that those elements that fall under the block display level also have a default element display And here is block. Okay. You can see that by default, this is how it should look like. Okay. But the browser already knows these tags fall under display. And because of that, we don't need to write block in line like this. Okay. But at in the normal sense, it should be like this. Okay. So now with this in your mind let's apply our width and height okay width and height so to apply width and height to your span let's take the span let's do the span example to apply height and width to this okay what do we do okay so in order to be able to apply height and width simply come here and then you put display block right display block and this way you can now assign your height and your width without this when you apply or assign your width and height it's not going to mind you all right it's not going to mind you and it's not going to take any effect until you apply this display inline block to your code only then it will start taking effect okay so we'll now give it something like a width okay and give it a width. so something like width and then of maybe 100 pixels and then when we go there it should change or take effect Right, so our span should now increase depending on the width or the size you can see it has increased a little bit now let me give it a bigger value so instead of 100 let me give it 500 okay 
So let me give it 500 pixels and then reload. And as you can see, it's now taking half the size of our web browser. You can likewise give it a height and we simply come down and then we we'll put height like this and then we assign our height in this case i'm going to give it the same 500 pixels but i think that is too much so i'll give it like maybe 100 pixels and then we we'll go back there and it should take effect and now as you can see it's taking effect so before you can apply or assign width and height to your inline block elements sorry your inline elements all you need to do is to give it what we call inline block display in order for it to work just like we did here inside our code editor like this inline block okay so that's it right so the final thing we'll be talking about when it comes to display type in css is visibility visibility okay so let's talk about visibility all right so with visibility we can with the help of visibility properties okay and display properties we can hide our elements we can hide our elements so something like this span we can hide it we can hide it with the help of visibility so all we need to do is to come down and then we put visibility okay so this visibility visibility and then all you need to do is to put hidden okay so when you put hidden there it's not going to be rendered on the web but you're not going to see anything and as you can see it is hidden all right it is hidden so we'll go back there and the next element we can assign or yeah is display none. Okay? so clear this and then we give it display none display none so let me come down a bit this way and then we'll put display display like this and then we're going to give it something like num right so we give it num and i go back to our browser and reload nothing is going to happen because visibility and display none is almost the same okay almost the same all right so that's it that's how you hide things on your or through css with the help of display none and visibility hidden so with the help of with hidden your element is still going to contain or take the space required okay that space is going to be there right let me demonstrate that for you to see so i'll go back here and then with this display now i'll clear it good now i'll take you back to my browser reload perfect so now let me talk about the visibility hidden okay visibility hidden so now see the space this image is occupying now when i take you to the code editor and then we we'll go to that image where can we find this image i think okay we are not targeting this image let me come here all right so we need to target this image before we can apply that so i'll simply come down this way all right Good. So now I'm going to target image, which is IMG. Sorry. IMG. And then we're going to target this image by giving it visibility of what? Hidden. Okay. Hidden. Now let's go to our web browser. Reload this page. And you can see that space there's still something there yes that is not visible it's just like opacity okay if you give your image an opacity of zero 
your image is not going to be visible until you assign an opacity of 1 or 0 0.1 to it okay which is from 0 0.0 to 1 so you can have 0 0 0.1 all the way to 1 right so that's opacity okay we talked about opacity in our last series okay if you have not watched that go ahead and watch that video very very helpful in my next episode we're going to be talking about floats in css if you're not subscribed to this youtube channel consider subscribing that way anytime videos like this are released you're notified see you in the inside bye bye